Thanks for joining our LinkedIn Live. My name is Eric Helge, and I am the Director of Career Advising at DeVry University. My role at the university is working with our career advisors who support our students and alumni in their career development. I'm joined here today by Taijal Wakadia, who is a senior recruiter in LinkedIn Top Voice of 2020. We're going to be covering one, a very exciting topic, one of my personal favorites, which is personal branding and how to stand out in front of employers in an ever increasing virtual world. We're going to have a, an engaging conversation today, but we need your help. Please ask questions throughout our conversation, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. Tejal, thanks so much for joining me today. I wanted to start in getting to know you a little bit more. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you became a recruiter? Yeah, Eric, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, so, you know, when we're little, nobody thinks about being a recruiter or being an HR person, right? Like, it's not a thought that we have. We either want to be a doctor or a police person or an astronaut, an actor, or something like that. I was the same way. I didn't think about being a recruiter until I happened into a job in HR and I enjoyed recruiting. I'm such an extrovert and I love talking to people. Um, and it's funny because when I was little, I wanted to be everything. Like I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be a teacher, I wanted to be a computer hacker. So what I ended up doing is just being a recruiter where I can, I get to talk to all of these people. I don't get to do the work, but I still get to talk to wonderful people that have exciting careers and great stories to tell, so. Awesome, so let's, let's dive in. Let's talk about what a professional brand is. Can you provide me with your definition of a professional brand? Sure, so a professional brand is a 360 view of who you are in the professional world. So that includes your online presence, how you show up to work, um, your work ethic, uh, your work uh, drive, as well as pe the perception of you by your colleagues and supervisors. So it is not just your personality, not just your online presence, it is your online presence, your personality, as well as how other people perceive you in the professional environment. I love that it's the 360 view, right? It's not just online, offline, it's it's everything. That's great. Okay. And so uh, how does that impact your job search? How does your professional brand impact your job search? Yeah, absolutely. So when you are looking for a job as a student, as an alumni, just as a job seeker um, in the virtual world, it is so important to not just look at your online history, but also like how do people see you or perceive you? Are you known to be the um, jerk? Are you known to be the bubbly, shiny person that always has a smile on their face? Are you a negative Nancy? I'm sorry if anybody's name is Nancy, this is not a dig, but you know, the phrase negative Nancy, are you, um, are you like that? Or are you the person that brings a smile on everyone's face? Because that thing matters uh, when hiring managers and recruiters talk to you or talk to your colleagues about you, along with your uh, LinkedIn recommendations. It is so important that you have LinkedIn recommendations because that shows a recruiter like me what other people think of you in a very online, very public manner. I love that it, it brings up to mind um, what I what we always tell job seekers is to always Google yourself when you're doing a job search, actually even throughout life. And you, you always be aware of what someone can find when you Google yourself. So yep. let's talk about um, the hiring manager, right? So as a recruiter, your job is to go through applicants and screen applicants and provide those to a hiring manager. Does a hiring manager really look at someone's professional brand? What kind of impact does that have? Yeah, um, and what the thing that the hiring manager uh, most of the time is looking for is their connections um, because they might often, um, if you work somewhere that they have a friend that they can trust or an ex-colleague that they can trust and they can ask them confidentially, hey, what do you think about this, uh, this person? They might do that, especially if you're actively looking and don't have a job right now. Um, of course, most companies won't uh, betray your confidentiality in the sense they won't go to your current employer and be like, hey, this person's looking. What do you think about them? But more so like your ex-colleagues, um, if they're like, oh, no, like that person had a problem with everything anybody did. They were always negative. They always criticized everything versus somebody's like, oh, they always were cheery. They were always the cheerleader. They always had a like didn't matter what the problem was. They like uh, faced it head on. And that really matters to a hiring manager because they're trying to see what kind of person they are bringing on into their into their team because 
in an interview, we are all our best selves, right? We're putting our best foot forward. We're dressed to the nines. We're showing up very professionally um, and maybe hi hiding our crazy a little bit, right? So they, that's why the professional brand is not just online, but it's also how other people perceive you. And so, and I love that, that, that the professional brand is a 360 view, which also includes how other people view you and perceive you and talk about you. That's, that's, that's interesting. So Tejo, let's talk about some myths. There's a lot of myths out there about professional branding. I think the one that we hear the most from job seekers is about a professional brand just being about your personality. It's something that you can change. It's something that you're built with. Is that true or not true? So um, it's not just about your personality. And I dislike the phrasing when people are like, oh, well, I can't change who I am. Of course you can. If you're a jerk and somebody's giving you constructive criticisms, like you just arrive as a jerk, um, that thing you said was uh, very arrogant or very, like I didn't like that or something like that. And you, your defense is like, you, your defenses go up because somebody's criticizing you. And you're like, well, that's not how I meant it. It matters. It's not just your personality. It is how other, other people's perception is their reality, right? I can think you, Eric, are the greatest person in the world and the greatest director of career services, but somebody else might have a different opinion of you. And um, it's my perception versus their perception. So that matters. It's not just your personality. And it's also how you interact with other people. We all have bad days, right? Like, we're humans, we have bad days, but how many bad days turn into, that's just who that person is. Tejal, I want you to tell me who that person is that, that thinks I'm not the greatest director of career services, and I, we'll talk later. I haven't met anybody that said that. But. Oh, great. So uh, let's talk about your another myth, which is a professional brand should be super focused on a, a, specific, a specific job, um, even on LinkedIn. You know, should, should, a target, should that be targeted to a specific job? No. So your professional brand is who you are as a professional. It shouldn't be targeted to your job. What should be targeted to your job is your resume, not even your LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile is think about it as like your um, 100 percent everything you've ever done in your life. So if I as a recruiter in the technical world sees your pro profile, I want to talk to you versus and another recruiter, another technical recruiter in the finance industry still wants to talk to you. So your LinkedIn profile is a 360 view of everything you are, everything you've done. Your resume, however, when you apply to my job should be targeted to the job that you're applying to. Professional brand should not be. Professional brand is, uh, like we said, I think we we're talking about we're saying the same statement over and over again, 360 view of who you are as a professional. Sure, and but I like that you you distinguish between the LinkedIn profile being more generic, right, and the resume being more specific. And I love that you talk about targeting your resume to a specific job because that's something that we talk to students and alumni about all the time and help them figure out how to do. So I love that we're doing the right thing there. That's great. So let's dig more into what should go into a professional brand. Um, obviously, technology being a very important skill set for all individuals to have, especially in the more virtual world that we live in. Um, how do you see uh, technology skills show up in a professional brand? Where, where should that go? How should that be highlighted? Yeah, so your technical skills should be in two places, your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're not a technology professional, right? Uh, me as a recruiter, I'm not a technical person, but I have used softwares that impact my job search, could impact my job search. So for example, NATS, which is an applicant tracking system that all recruiters use, um, I list that on my resume because that matters to the uh, hiring manager that's seeing that saying, oh, she's used this, 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 and this, um, which is similar to the one we are using. Let's talk to her kind of deal. So for example, for a non-technical person, like an accountant, if you've used QuickBooks, you should list QuickBooks on there. If you've used Net NetSuite, you should list that on there. If you're an Excel power user and the job requires you to be an Excel power user, you should list that. Not just list in your skills section, but also under the experience or the project section, list how you've used it. Because just listing um, the technical uh, skill or the software is not enough. I want to see where and how you've used it and only list it if you want to continue using it. Like, for example, I don't list Bullhorn in my uh, resume, mainly because I never want to use it again. Um, and most companies that I, I would apply to, not right now, and historically, don't use Bullhorn. I don't list it. I don't want to use it. 
use it once, don't want to continue using it. So I remove it. So if you don't, if you have a skill that you don't really want to use anymore, um, don't list it. But don't discount the skills that you do have, especially mm -hmm. technical skills that you do want to use. It, 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 it's always good to showcase that. That's fantastic. So when you're working um, with applicants and with employers, what do you see employers wanting for, uh, as far as technology skills? What's important to them to see from both a technology role, but maybe even a non-technology role? What, what's important for them to see from an applicant? Uh, so the not, let's talk about the non-technical a little bit first. So what they want to see is a lifelong learner. Are you continuing to learn? Are you continuing to grow yourself? Um, how adaptive you are to different um, situations, how agile you are, because the business world is ever changing, right? We have gone from being um, in the last 50 years itself, we've gone from using paper to computers and emails to now 100% virtual where everything happens virtually, right? So they want to see how would you adapt and um, how would you grow? So those are the non-technical skills that most employers are looking for. Um, on the technical side, for technical people, so most companies use .NET or Java as their language of choice. That doesn't mean that they don't use Python or Ruby on Rails or anything like that. Most companies use that. And most companies also use relational databases as their um, major database. Uh, smaller companies might use non-relational database, but most companies use relational database. And every company that has an IT department with a software engineering team uses JavaScript. Um, I haven't met a company that doesn't use JavaScript as their front end, some version of it. On the engineering side, that's the software engineering. On the hardware engineering side, we're talking Microsoft Office, Microsoft, um, Microsoft on the majority, there are people that use Mac systems. Um, so you might want to start learning Mac operating system and how to fix the issues, um, as well as very rarely, I want to say 5% use Linux. And so let's, that's, a, that's a great um, kind of leading to my next question about if you don't have these skills, right, either technical or non-technical, what do you suggest to a, a job seeker or a student who, you know, looks at, looks at a job description and, and realizes they're maybe missing some of these skills? What should they do? They go out there and learn. Uh, the world, the internet has given us wonderful resources, YouTube, there are certifications, there are blog posts. So many people are creating so much content around these topics that you can just go out there and learn whatever your learning method is. If it, if you learn through uh, watching YouTube videos, if you learn through reading, which is how I am, or more structured environment, also how I am, um, you know, you need a certification or a degree or something like that. Go out there and acquire it because that is going to matter more and list that on your resume, right? Um, when I started my master's program, I listed on my resume, started listing on my resume that I'm a master's student. It's on my LinkedIn profile that I'm a master's student. I want the world to know that I'm constantly reinventing myself. I, I, I love that. And that, that's one of the things I love about DeVry is the variety of programs that we offer in a variety of different levels, certificate, associates, bachelor's, master's, really someone, something for everyone. And I think that's great. Um, and even I love YouTube, right? Googling yeah. YouTube, dude, there's so much you can find out there um, just to refresh or enhance your skill set. So that's fantastic. I wanted to move in now and talk about another big part of, of job search, which is networking. Mm -hmm. um, how do you find, or how do you uh, grow your professional brand and grow through your network? How do you grow your network using your professional brand? Let me ask it that way. Yeah, so, um... I love introverts, right? I, my life is full of introverts. I at one point went through the introvert phase and I love talking to introverts because they're like, well, I don't like talking to people. And that's not a dig at introverts at all. Like there are days when I don't wanna talk to anybody, right? But what I tell them is that right now is the best time for you to build your professional brand within your network. So talk to people. One of the best tips I have utilized and I've given to other people, the introverts in my life is that when you're talking to somebody, when you're meeting somebody new, associate them with someone similar, a similar person from a book, a game, a D&D uh, league that you really like. For me, it's the Harry Potter world. I have Professor Snape, I have Professor Dumbledore, I have Harry, I have Ron, I have all of these people in, in everyone's world, I'm the Hermione. So it works out really well. Um, so I always say, 
take that person, think about who they remind you of, and that way build the character, um, build the relationship and build your network because that's easier than trying to figure out who they are, what they like, what their favorite color is. Do they like coffee? Do they not like coffee? Do they think coffee is for immature people? I don't know. I love coffee, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. I, I love that you, that, that helps make networking more approachable, right? Yeah. Kind of make it a game in that sense. Um, it kind of breaks down the uncomfortableness of it. That's awesome. So just a quick reminder to our audience, um, we will be taking your questions. So make sure that you're entering those into the chat and we'll get to as many as we can um, when when we get to, or when we get, when we finish our conversation. Um, and so I wanted to ask about reinventing yourself. And you mentioned this a little bit earlier on in our conversation. How do you do this? When around about your professional brand, how do you reinvent your professional brand if you feel like it's gotten stale or if you feel like it's not being kind of representing you, yep. what do you do? What 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 steps should you take to reinvent that? So here are the steps I've uh, recommended to other people and the steps I've taken to reinvent myself. I'm constantly growing. I'm constantly lear learning. Um, in my uh, the last four years, I have had a book goal. Um, I this year I'm planning on reading 50 books. I don't know if this is going to happen, but I'm planning on reading 50 books. And out of that 50 books, 25 are going to be towards my professional self and 25 are going to be for fun um so if reading books is your thing that's how you grow um if you uh engaging in content through youtube or any other uh, video plot platform is your thing do that um mentors i love mentors i love having mentors and i love mentoring people because you can learn so much from your mentor and also your mentee we have all had different life experiences and we've all done different things in our life there are people that I mentor that I talk to about my situation if something is happening and they're like oh have you thought about this this and this and I'm like and then like I make a joke I'm like I'm supposed to be mentoring you and they're like you know it, but it's funny because like I learn from them as much as they learn from me and vice versa with my mentors like they learn from me as much as I learn from them so it's a two-way street have mentors in your life if it's your boss, if it's a colleague, if it's a leader, um, every job I've had, I've found mentors. Um, and it doesn't matter. I'll just go up to them and be like, I want you to mentor me. And sometimes they might ask, like, why me? Why now? Um, like, why do you want to be mentored for me? And have an answer. What do you like about this person that you want to learn from them? So um, I always have an answer. The way you think, I really enjoy it and I think I can learn from it. Um, or the way you talk to people, I really want to know more about uh, how you approach people, whatever that might be. Use your mentors, have people um, within work and outside of work that can mentor you. I, I love that, the mentor um, relationship, especially because we know from earlier, a professional brand is a 360 view of you. And it's always hard to get that, what do people see of me, right? How do people interpret me or perceive me? And having a mentor, you can ask those questions, right? Am I coming off too brash? Am I too harsh? Am I too quiet? Am I too this, right? I, I love that idea of, of having someone that you can talk to and ask those questions of. Yeah. And find a mentor that will be honest with you. That's the biggest thing. Cause like a lot of times mentors will be like, oh yeah, no, you're doing great. You're doing great, buddy. And that's great. We all need cheerleaders, but we also need people that will give it to us straight when we're not doing something right. Um, two of my mentors, um, I actually put them down on my master's application as references. Um, I use the same one person as the same reference uh, that for the last four years on anything I do. Um, so have those relationships built where they will tell the person what's good about you and what you could improve upon. And they will tell you too. Um, we don't want people talking about us behind our back, but you want to know what you can do to um, grow yourself, right? I always ask people, what can I do to better myself? Like, what do I need to do? That's a great question to ask. We're going to get to our Q&A portion, um, so if you have questions, please do leave those in the chat. But before I forget, I wanted to let our students and alumni who are listening that Career Services is going to be hosting their annual Career Week March 22nd to March 26th with an all-college virtual career fair on March 31st. Um, so students and alumni are invited and you'll be getting more communication in email shortly. So. Tejal, let's get to some questions. We have our first question from Eric. He wants to know how much time do you spend working your network? Every week, um, about 30 minutes to an hour. I um, think I, yeah. I, I, anytime you spend is, is good time with your network, right? You don't yeah. want to forget your network. Yeah, 
Exactly. Um, when I see people um, recently, there's a recruiter that I am connected to on LinkedIn uh, from uh, Amazon. And we have similar thoughts and we've spoken offline, but I'm like, I want to really have coffee with you. Let's have virtual coffee. Um, so I'll pick a couple people every month and be like, let's do virtual coffee. Let's catch up. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like what is happening in your world? Let's talk. Let's go get to know each other a little bit more. So it depends on how much time and energy you have uh, to do that. But for me, it's 30 minutes to an hour every week. And I love that you brought up the virtual coffee, right? Just because, you know, we're in a pandemic and we have to find things to do virtually doesn't stop networking. Those things can still happen. So thank you for bringing that up. Mark asked, uh, do you recommend to rewrite your resume for each job that you're applying for? Uh, rewrite is a strong word. I would say editing is a better term because rewriting means you are starting from scratch. No, don't do that edit the uh, your resume based on the job description. What I like to do is have the resume, um, and I'm a, I'm a pa paper killer, I'm a tree killer, so I'll print the print my resume and I'll pin, print the job description and I'll like highlight what um, things I have in the job description. And then I'll see if I've done that um, in my resume, um, if it's listing that. If it's not, then I'll go ahead and add it. But if you're more of an online computer person, have those two things side by side start hi highlighting at the job description and then see if it's listed on your resume. I love that, to, to, to use the job description as, as the map for writing your resume. I think that's great. And I, I would agree, I think rewrite is a, it's a pretty strong word, but maybe the editing, I love that. Yeah, well, but one thing I wanna tell um, the Mark. person that just asked that question is um, just because a job description has a keyword that you haven't used, don't put that on there. Um, there's this myth with the application tracking system with, with what recruiters use is that they will automatically reject you. They won't. It's a database uh, with a front end interface that we can use to review your resume. So just because it's listed on your job on the job description doesn't mean you if you haven't used it, if you don't want to use it, if it's not relevant to what you've done, don't list that on your resume. I think that's a that's a that's a great reminder that whatever is on your resume, an employer could ask you about and want an example about, and and so you you want to make sure that that that's truthful. We have another question from Angel. Um, wants to know uh, said he created a digital resume and wants to know your thoughts on digital resumes. I love digital resumes. Um, if especially if your digital resume has your portfolio. Um, has your if you're a technical person and an engineer, software engineer, and you, it links to your GitHub, if it links to your GitLab, whatever Git repository you use, versus a more of a creative person with their portfolio of the designs that they have created, the graphics that they have created, the animation work that they have done, love digital resumes. And and with a digital resume, would you recommend a video resume, uh, someone talking about their skills and talking more about themselves within that portfolio? Yeah, I think an introduction is nice. It also helps build build your professional brand, right? Because it gives me who you are and how you talk, um, especially in the, I've seen this in the creative world when people will send me a video introduction to themselves saying, hey, and one of the best ones that I've seen is this person linked their, uh, this li um, link there, this YouTube link uh, on their YouTube account that was geared specifically for my company and said, hey there, uh, Tejal at XYZ Company. I saw this post, I love uh, doing this and all of that stuff. Um, and they went on for like 30 more seconds introducing themselves. Wow, very interesting. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about mentors. We have a question about where to find mentors. Um, so where do you find your mentors at or where do you suggest people can find mentors? Um, so my mentors are all over the place. Uh, some of them are my ex bosses, colleagues, uh, leaders from the com companies I've worked for. Others are uh, more on the virtual world. Um, so really, it depends on who you want your mentor to be. There are mentors that I have that I've never spoken to. I just learn from them and I consume their content. I still consider them mentors because they're teaching me something new versus um, my mentor, uh, one of my mentors, Mona, she worked with me at one of my old companies. She works with me right now, and I just learned from her constantly. So if you have a teacher if, for our students and alumni, if you have a teacher that you really enjoy, they have, you want to learn from them, ask them. 
if you have uh, if you're currently working or if you have somebody in the industry you're looking to go into that um, you really admire just reach out to them and say hey not sure if you're uh, up for mentoring i would love to learn more from you can i buy you coffee virtually can we talk for 30 minutes um so yeah well, i love that mentors can come from anywhere right i mean yeah. they, they really can, can be anyone coming from anywhere um, I think that 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 that's great to look for mentors in different places of your life, right? That again, 360 view, everyone can give you a different feedback. Um, so we have another question about mentors, and this one's really interesting. What's the etiquette? What's the etiquette for compensating a mentor for their time? For example, if it were in real life, you might pay for their coffee, right? But the digital aspect of this makes it a little awkward. So what are your thoughts on how you can compensate someone for a digital conversation or a meeting that you might have with them? So most mentors will not ask you to pay them. If they do, they're not there for mentorship, they're there for the money. Um, on In the digital world, just um, say, hey, what's your favorite coffee place? Or what's your favorite tea place? Um, what's the closest one to you? Can I send you a $5 Starbucks gift card or a Dutch Bros gift card or your local coffee shop gift card? Um, and can we do this? Um, so it doesn't really have to be like, let me buy you coffee. It also can be like, let me send you a gift card uh, for this thing. And I think I think that that's spot on. It's how would you thank a friend for doing something for you, right? Yeah. You would say thank you. You'd write them a card. You might give them a gift card. I, I think compensation, the idea of compensation is maybe the wrong way to frame it. It's just a, a nice thank you to them. Yeah. We have a question about resumes. Um, and so Felicia wants to know, she's transitioning from accounting to human resources. Um, mm -hmm. She's been an accountant for more than 20 years. Um, she has a concern though, if she leaves off accounting off her resume, it's gonna be a big gap. Yeah. That. So what would you recommend um, that she do? Because she doesn't have any HR experience. So how would she write her resume in that way? Yeah, so what I would recommend, and I don't know much about Felicia, but Felicia, if you've taken um, HR courses, if you've got, um, try getting the SHRM certifications, um, see if you can sit in on that, because most of the time, the just your regular certification would just um, be a bachelor's degree and one year of experience. Um, so try getting certifications in the industry. And when you write your resume and write your summary, say, I have 20, 10 plus years of accounting experience. And from that, I learned about confidentiality, um, employee relations and all of that stuff that I want to now transition into human resources. Yeah, I definitely would agree. I, I wouldn't leave accounting off the resume. That's a big part of your career, but I would think about the transferable skills, right? Yep. What did you do in accounting that in, that you can do in HR and focus on those things? Yeah. Um, so we have, another, we, have a, we have a question about cover letters. Um, do you recommend cover letters um, and what should go in a cover letter? Um, so cover letters have a love-hate relationship with recruiters. I read all of the cover letters that are sent to me. Um, what should go in the cover letter that's furthering? Um, so I always say cover letters should say why you want this job, what makes you good for this job, and also what else is not on your resume that you can highlight. So if you took a five-year break um, or a two-year break or whatever it is to take care of family, you had a kid, um, you were a stay-at-home mom or dad or parent or whatever it is, address that in the cover letter. Address it on your resume, but also address that on your cover letter. Um, the cover letter is more further defined to the job that you're applying to. And that's when you can really showcase uh, whether you've done any research on the company. I love it when uh, the cover letter is either uh, addressed to me or the hiring manager themselves. And, and I, I, I love that. And cover letter, I always say, it should be more about the employer than it is about you. Right, and it should help connect the dots. So I think Tejal, what you said about is there concerns you have, or is there an elephant in the room that you should address? Is there an employment gap? These things could be covered very easily in a cover letter in a very in a very nice way to let the employer know this is what you did, or this is why you're applying for the job. I think that that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, our next question is, what can you do to change your professional brand in the next two, four, six months? Um, yeah, um, I would always suggest, um, so I'm a writer downer. I have like 50 notebooks um, in my house and my purse and everywhere in my world. Um, imagine who you want your professional brand to be, who that person is, what do they do? How do they show up? Write all of the things down and start implementing those things, uh, steps one by one. So for me, 
um, in the next six months, I want to grow into being a leader in like more of a formal um, authority, not formal authority, but like formal space. So I have imagined who Tejal is going to be in, as a leader, and I've written things down, and I started implementing little by little what that is going to look like in my day-to-day -day life. So when I show up in six months, I'm a leader, whether I have the formal title or not. I love it starts with a, a, a kind of a self-assessment, right? Mm -hmm. of, of what you have, what you don't have, and if and if you don't have it, how do you go get it? That that's that's awesome. Um, John wants to know: Is it preferred to list achievements on your resume rather than a paraphrased job description? Yes, love achievements, love accomplishments, love ROIs. I don't care about your job duties. I know what you did as an accountant. I know what you did as a software engineer. I don't care. Um, it's the same five things that everybody does, right? But what I do care about is the accomplishments. And people sometimes are like, well, I'm an accountant, like, or I'm an accounts payable person. I'm an administrator, I, I'm administrative assistant. I don't have an, any accomplishment. I'm like, you're selling yourself short because you do. Everybody has accomplishments in their career. We just have to look deep enough uh, to find those because we are not good at selling ourselves. We're just not salespeople, right? So we don't like talking about ourselves. We don't like talking about our um, experience or the th great things we did because we don't want to come across as arrogant or narcissistic or whatever it is. But think about what you've done and how has that helped the company? So the best place to start is your job description read through it. What have you done? Have you done that? And how did that help the company? Now I want to know how did that help the company in your resume? And I love that you point out help the company. I think again, we get caught up in a cover letter or a resume or whatever, whatever it is talking about ourselves, yeah. which we should, but it's really important about the impact on the company because that as a recruiter, I'm assuming is what you're looking for. What can you do for this company that I'm hiring for? So that, that, that is awesome. We have another question. Um, should we get uh, should we get letters of recommendations from colleagues when we are applying for new jobs? How important are letter letters of recommendation? Yeah, they are good. Um, we definitely recommend it. They cannot hurt you. Just make sure that the letter of recommendations are properly worded. The grammar, all of that is accurate. Uh, because the worst thing you can do to yourself is uh, send me a um, recommendation from somebody that cannot spell manager, cannot spell duties or things like that, right? Cannot spell public. So make sure that it's uh, grammatically accurate. It spells out nicely. It says the things that you need to say. It cannot hurt you, but um, I typically look at the letters of rec or the recommendations on LinkedIn. I use the letters of recommendations you've gotten from your colleague, but I also look at the recommendations you have on LinkedIn. Awesome. Tejo, I know that I learned so much today. So thank you for uh, for chatting with me, for giving us such great advice on your professional brand. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for joining our LinkedIn Live today. Uh, if you have any questions or are interested in enrolling in our next session at DeVry, please reach out to a representative or you can go to our website at devry.edu. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.